Bell's brows furrow as your minds connect. He sees the burning embers of Joaquin's rest, then Floric's face as she tells you of Raven God's abduction. Hells! Older Raven God's been taken! Then we need to seek him out and get him to safety. You see, Grand Duke Ravenguard is my father. I know I haven't said our relation was no matter of pride, not least for him. Thank you. That means a lot. But I wonder. What makes a Duke of Baldur's Gate so interesting to the drow? Even the houses of Menzo Baranzin would have little use for my father. No, this is no drow plot. These absolute nutters, these true souls are behind his abduction. His absence alone will sow chaos in the city. If they were to infect him, he could lead Baldur's Gate to ruin. All the more reason to find him. The Absolute has seized not just my father, but the future of the Sword Coast. I know, and you're right. When I look into a mirror, I see two faces. I see the Blade of Frontiers, a man hunting the fiends who prey on the weak and claw at the coast. And I see Will Ravenguard, a memory of a memory, a man who belongs to the past. I wanted you to know the blade, not the shadow he left behind. One horn, the stink of Avernus, Advocatus Diaboli. We'll all be gods damned. The blade of frontiers. Thought I'd shaken you for good. That'll teach me to underestimate you. Karlak, the Archdevil Zeriel's gladiator, come to burn the Sword Coast to ash. If by met you mean hoofing it through the hells with this fucker on my tail. Shut it, devil. I know your kind. A heart darker than a shadow's nightmares. You'd cut a child's throat just to taste the blood. A devil? I didn't take the blade for a fool. I... A great fire roars through you. The fire of the first hell. You are Karlak, tearing through demons across a blood-red landscape of fire and volcanic cinder. The front lines of the blood war. With every swing of her axe, Karlak fulfills Mistress Zariel's purpose. Proof! Clear as summer sky! It's over, Karlak! It's time you feel the sting of the blade! I've tried to tell you. I'm not what you think I am. Another vision. Karlak's blade rays slicing through devils, Zariel's servants, as her eyes dart around, seeking escape. Will shudders with Karlak's desperation. She is a victim of the Blood War, not an agent of it. By Baldurin's helm, I... No, I will not be tricked. You saw the truth. I may be an effective soldier, but I never wanted to serve Zarya. Legged it away from her the first chance I got. And yet you served. Will catches his breath and his lips straighten. Sheer dread twists his face. No! Devils cannot be trusted! You know monsters better than anyone. Can't you look in my eyes and see I'm not a devil? You don't know what this means. You don't know what you're asking me to do. I'm asking you to live, Will. I don't want to hurt you. And to be frank, I'd rather not find out how the Blade got his name. I swear to you, on all I am, I am not what you think. 
Shit! Shit. You really are no devil, are you? I've... I've been deceived. Oh, thank the gods. Thought I was gonna have to take your head. <laughs> you would have died in the attempt. But there have been enough threats today. Truce then, eh? Aye. Truce. I see the good in you, Karlak. I promise not to lose sight of it. Even when the hells burn hottest. You've been witness to a pantomime, I'm sorry to say. And I've played my part all too poorly. I can say only this. Karlak's not the only one who's had a villain's knife held to their throats. One night soon, when we make camp, the veil will be lifted, and I'll pay my penance. You're not in any danger, I promise. I can't say the same about me. attacked someone. Only the guards are allowed to do that, as this one is about to demonstrate. Your indiscreet killing has earned you a new foe. not returned, and half of the intruders escaped your guards. Sorry, mistress. We mucked up. Until their sanctuary is found, I will take something precious from you every hour that passes. A trinket, a tongue, a limb. I ain't no use without my limbs. The lads will make the prisoner squeal soon enough. I swear. Silence now, creature. Or I will silence you forever. As she turns to you, her thoughts mingle with yours. A cold hand caressing your brain. The chamber melts away to reveal a dark, endless nowhere. In it, you see a vision. The drow listens as a pale-eyed young woman whispers in her ear. One of those the voice spoke of, one of the chosen. The vision fades away. A true soul? Praise be. Are you here to join my hunt? This tribe is mine to command. If you have business here, then you report to me. 
You will join my hunt. You would dare. Guards to me. What a magnificent sight. I command you, corpse. Speak. Reveal truth to the absolute. Nothing. Must be reading it wrong. Suga and Sukuk. The hobgoblin turns to you, and the parasite squirms in your skull. You taste the ale on his tongue and the bile in his soul. The visions cloud your inner eye for a brief moment once again. You see the hobgoblin bowing before the armored elf you'd glimpsed before. The elf speaks of the hunt for a great weapon and the rewards that will go to whoever finds it. The hobgoblin's eyes gleam hungrily. If it isn't another true soul, he doesn't speak his next words, yet they still rattle your skull from within. You ever talk to a dead squid? Now's your chance. Guess you're a thick one, so I'll tell it straight. We're gonna make the carcass talk. Absolute says the dead Squiddy had a weapon. I reckon the killer nabbed it and scooted off to that looter camp. We find who killed it, and we find who took that weapon. So settle in. You feel Shadowheart's anxiety. The weapon the Absolute seeks is the artifact that she carries. The same one that protected you as you entered the goblin camp. Her mind focuses. Her suspicion cannot be aroused. They cannot discover that the weapon they seek is within their grasp. Heretic! Another parasite. Collect it. It might be useful. my luck again. I'm exhausted. Better find somewhere to camp soon. You are safe. We will not bite one another. The ringleaders have to die. The very natural order of things is in danger. Thanks to them. You did it. You actually did it. The leader's dead. <laughs> Praise Sylvanus. No, that's not right. Praise you, my friend. The Grove owes you a debt beyond measure. Killing's never my first choice. 
but those three were too dangerous to leave alive. And you'll receive it soon enough. Return to the Grove. I'll make my own way there. I can see to some matters there, and we can discuss what comes next amidst more bucolic surroundings than here. Scouts just reported. The goblins' leadership has been decimated. We might escape this place yet. And I hear you are the one to thank. I'm grateful. I took a collection from all of us. It isn't much, but you've earned it. Very good of you. Thank you. It's quite a day for reunions. Halcyn has returned, too. And I expect he'll want to speak with you. As for us, no armies at our heels. Amazing. We can finally leave. But perhaps we need not speak of farewells. We'll join your camp tonight to celebrate if you'll have us. With the leadership dead, no attack will be mounted on the Grove. I am in your debt, my friend. Speak to Wrath. He will reward you for your efforts. Korga. Poor child. The Grove will be a dimmer place without her potential. But you were right. You had no choice. I failed her long before you arrived. The Shadows could not have tempted her if I had taught her as I should have. But the Grove still stands even if she does not, thanks to you. The journey to Moonrise Towers, and all the dangers that that entails. But that's tomorrow's problem. Take some time for yourself tonight. Rest, celebrate. Come morning, I'll be by your side. You've done it. You brought Halcyn back. Thank you. No, thanks is not enough. May Sylvanus bless you for all your days. I cannot imagine taking on a camp full of goblins was a simple task. As am I. The grove will be whole again. Let me show you on your map where you can find the cache. Take this rune. You'll need it. Place it among the pedestals inside our library. When the wolf glows brightest, everything in the vault below will be yours.
You know, I never pictured myself as a hero. Never thought I'd be the one they'd toast for saving so many lives. And now that I'm here... I hate it. This is awful. True. That was fun. Still, I would have liked more for my trouble than a pat on the head and vinegar for wine. By all means, go and enjoy yourself. I'll be here, waiting for the sunrise. Everyone seems to be in high spirits. Strange. You know who I never thought I'd find myself caring for? Exactly right. Never gave them much thought. Certainly not that bunch in the grove. Yet we came through for them. We saved their lives. Odd. It's not talking enough for my liking. Share a bottle with me? It's quite a bottle. I liberated one of the finer vintages earlier. Best enjoyed someplace private, I think. We should wait a little while. Until the others have drifted off. Best not keep me waiting. I'd prefer not to entertain myself. Buzz of celebration quiets to a soothing hum as you approach your bunk. Though you seek repose, you needn't spend the night alone. There is one who yearns for you in the dark. Who will you seek? Your heart skips a beat. What treasures might this night bestow? You made it. Come here. Sit with me. Lots of people make promises. Few keep them. Well, to begin, I think a toast is in order. Any suggestions? Bold. What does us entail? I suppose I'll find out. To us. Now tell me something about yourself. And no tadpoles, dragons, marauding goblins, or anything like that. Something about you. Seems like you truly know the city. I never got to explore it to my liking. Don't stop now. Not just as things are getting interesting. Don't laugh, but I'm not quite sure I have anything to share. When you worship Shard, secrecy is everything. We'll sacrifice our own memories when ordered to. A lot of the little things... ...they're lost to me right now. Hm. I did. And you remembered. You're sweet. There's still plenty of wine, and the whole night is ahead of us. Nearly light. The others will be awake soon. Another 
the moment won't kill them, I suppose. Well, it might, but let's take that risk. Thank you for last night. Me too. She trails off. You read an invitation in her eyes. That didn't hurt, did it? Good to know. For the future. Let's head back. If we must. Ah. I trust you enjoyed your evening. After all your efforts, it was well deserved. It may be some time before you're afforded another such night. There is much to be done. And I promised I would help you however I could. I'm certain a cure for you can be found at Moonrise Towers, but it's complicated. The journey specifically, it's extremely perilous. Though it seems you're well accustomed to navigating danger. Finally, we're catching up on our puppet master. And the hunt ends at Moonrise Tower. Wait. There's more you need to know. To get to the towers, you'll need to pass through a terrible place. A cursed place. This curse shrouds everything in shadow. You will not find life, light, or anything natural there. Any who linger are twisted by the curse. They become shadow beings. Tormented. Dangerous souls. You could go overland, along the Risen Road or through the mountains. Easier at first, but you'll run into the Shadow Curse eventually. You could also go under. There is a tunnel somewhere in the ruined Temple of Saluna. It leads to Moonrise Towers through the Underdark. Long ago, a man called Ketherick Thorm built a secret stronghold deep down there, before rallying a whole army of Dark Justicias, Shah worshippers. Dark Justicias. I must see for myself. Aridan and his lot were looking for a way down there. They were promised riches if they retrieved a relic called the Night Song. But I think there's more. From this stronghold, Ketherick's forces could access both the Temple of Saluna and Moonrise Towers. But he was defeated before he could launch an attack. If you can find this place, I'll wager it will reveal a more direct path to Moonrise Towers. And maybe even bypass the worst of the Shadow Curse. Already? <laughs> if only I'd gone with you instead of Aradin. I would like to join your camp, if you'll allow me. I can offer my skills, my counsel. I've long sought to return to Moonrise Towers. It seems our fates have aligned. May Sylvanas guide us.
doing here? To fill your oceans, oh blessed Boal, our bones to build your temple in the deep. A wave of pure devotion washes over you, and with every surge, you feel a presence grow in response. Purge priest, promises your god wants proof, wants blood. You don't recognize the creatures, but this voice seems to have a hold over them. You! Our Lord of Murder demands sacrifice! You will be an offering for the great god Boal! is not divine, but fey, and it is murderous. Well placed! Blood wants a sacrifice! Blood wants blood! of emotion you feel the divine presence falter then revert to its basic cruel nature ah, bollocks don't do anything hasty now the fish folk got plenty of power we can share Blessed boar! What? Shut it, you! I'm talking to... My chosen. Chosen got power. You want power, don't you? Kiss my ass! I'm the Lord of Murder! I'll show you why! Hope your soul is in good hands. You've slain the pretender. We knew in our hearts the god Boal was false. But you, we see you. We know you by your true name, Ma Glumpa. A great deity needs a great name. Looks like you're off to a good start. What is to be your first commandment, O oh great god? We will spread word of Maglum. Your glory will sing from ten thousand throats. What 
to do. Scorched ground. your taste. Magic is getting drained. Someone there? Oh, for a skeleton key. Sounds like a dark oppression break. Is it the foam? That foul contemptuous heel. You know these words. They are from the opening stanza of a play you found in this very tower. Come out of love for me. Not love for blood and seal. 
Don't get me wrong. I love poetry as much as an ex-wizard, but using it to command an automaton really, seems a bit self-indulgent to me. You do not believe the secret show. Reveal the truth. Do what you wish to see. Confused by one, blown up by the other. You are swallowed by a chorus of turbulent music. Through one creature sing many voices. The harmony of an entire collective. Sovereign, he has come. He is here. The choir fades. A single melody rises above the others. Brassy and commanding. I am sovereign. You see a vision. Your lifeless body wrapped in fungal tendrils. The sovereign is threatening you. State your purpose. Fungal roots weave through your mind. Seeking your true intent. Then the Sovereign drones a new melody. Cautious, but welcoming. Descend to me. Let us speak in flesh. The persistent music coaxes you forward. The Sovereign expects you. Doing to those the sovereign's thick fingers stroke the corpse at its feet. A droning melody greets you as the creature turns its gaze to you. Flesh talker, I show you a memory. Watch and listen. A violent vision grips you. Dwegar, dark dwarves chopping myconid remains. Our peace. They killed our young. The Sovereign's song slows to the pace of a dirge. It is still in mourning. We laid waste to many, but intruders remain. Lakewood. The Sovereign's song halts as it measures your worth. I sense your resolve. You will find Dwergar invaders near Lake's Edge. Cleanse the rot. Destroy them. Dwergar invaders? We can manage that. Better than picking this fight, surely. An illusion comes over you. A Dwergar choking on a cloud of gleaming dust. Accept this gift. It will help you exterminate. The Sovereign gifts you one more vision. A wall of vines parting to reveal glowing light. Riches of magic and mind. Cleanse the rot and they are yours. You do the circle a service. We will await word. OK. 
condition is familiar. Poison derived from a wild weed common to the Underdark. She'll need an antidote soon, most likely held by the Poisoner. In me. No arguments there. Felt like a hook horror was sorting through my guts. But <clears throat> that cure did the trick. Quick sharp too. I thank you for your help, but I gotta get moving. Oh, <clears throat> it hurts. Carl's garters. Oh, I don't have time for this. My kin need me. Maybe not, but you are. I need you to rescue my kin. We can pay. We're Iron Hand Clan, best artificers in Baldur's Gate. We were on an expedition down here when the Dwergar snatched us up. I got away, but not the others. The Greys have them digging out some old ruin across the lake. Just mining for materials. No, nothing unusual, but our work pays well. Help my clan, and we'll make it worth your while, I swear. Thank you. Only wish I could go with you. But here... I nabbed these boots from the Greys when I ran. I'll feel better knowing you're using them to kick some Dwegger ass. I'll mark where I made my escape, and... Uh, wait here, I suppose. Not much choice, eh? Visitor, you're a welcome sight, but let us observe the customs of the locals. The scholar's brow tenses. His voice spills into your skull, the spores connecting mind to mind. Blurg, proud member of the Society of Brilliance at your service. Or perhaps not. Your mind is far more complex than that of the fungi. Understandable. We are small in number and rarely stay in one place for long. My colleagues and I are working to improve conditions in the Underdark. This need not be such a dire, hostile place. It's curious to find a surface dweller here. What has brought you down so deep? Truly remarkable. But why come to the Underdark, where they hold so much power? You were infected by an illithid tadpole. It's a miracle you're still intact. You must be worried sick, but have no fear. I have a friend who may be able to assist. Omelium! I hope this is important, Blurg. My Zerkwood samples need constant attention. It is. This adventurer has an illithid tadpole inside his head, but he hasn't turned. No ceramorphosis. That's impossible, but intriguing. Are you looking to have it extracted? I have broken free from the Elder Brain's yoke. I no longer serve the Grand Design. I ask that you refrain from violence, while I respect that your opinion of my kind may not change. A collective quest to eliminate the Gith and enslave all other humanoids 
If that settles matters for the time being, would you like a diagnosis? Open your mind to me. Let us see what lurks within. As the Melowan's mind pierces yours, the tadpole pulses with power. It feels ten times its size. Alive. Awake. Almost smug. This is most unusual. The incubation period should be complete, as should your transformation. But the lava is infused with strange magic. It appears to be in some form of stasis. No. It appears to be shielded from physical and magical influence. And even without the shield, the extraction would involve severe cranial trauma. I intend no disrespect, but one can only heal so much of their own brain tissue. But not to worry. Should you transform, I will happily perform a new examination. A nautiloid? Fascinating. I have never set foot on one myself. They were our warships during the greatest eras of the Illithid Empire. We ruled the entire astral plane from their decks. The design was lost when the Gith rebelled and ended our dominion. Of course, I am sorry I cannot assist you in its removal. But I have... An idea. Oh, perhaps I should start taking notes. There may be a way to bypass that stasis. There are many alchemical substances that can influence the mind. I do not intend to shatter its protection. I need only bypass the... Interference that prevents me from communicating with the lava. A tincture distilled from a collection of rare mushrooms. They have subtle psionic influence. I would require a fresh tongue of madness and timusk spores. But be warned, in their natural state, both of these mushrooms can be quite dangerous. Timusks cause confusion in those that approach them. The tongue is self-explanatory. These are fine specimens. It will only take me a moment to brew them to proper potency. Omeluum turns away to prepare the potion, lost in its own musings. You must drink the entire draught. I can make no promises as to its taste. The potion is disgusting beyond description. The only mercy is that it goes down quickly. Not a drop left. Very good. As the potion influences your mind, you may find yourself acting irrationally. Try and stay focused. The world loses its edges, its finer boundaries. You are fluid, but trapped like a creature suspended in amber. Use. 
sparks and colors dance around Umeluum, but you stay steady and staring ahead. The tadpole spasms, seizes. It's fighting the potion even harder than you are. Fear pierces your mind like knives of ice. The parasite digs deeper, as if it needs to hollow out your skull. lose their edge. You are stalwart, turning that tide of fear against itself. The parasite swells with power, more power than you have ever felt before. It surges and twists, lashing out against that which would dare to intrude. The parasite in your mind quiets, pleased with itself. Omeluum, are you well? That lava is like nothing I have ever observed before. Its power is unsettling. Such an outcome was not in my calculations. There is more to this being than mere stasis. Such crude destruction may not waylay a lava like this, but there is another possibility. I possess a ring of mind shielding. It prevents elder brains from noticing my presence. It will not remove the lava, but it will limit its influence, both positive and negative. I would offer it as a gift, but in truth, the ring is priceless. Is there anything you could offer me in turn? A fascinating topic indeed. What can you tell me? What a brilliant experience. To feel one step closer to my ancestors is a fine gift indeed. Here, it is yours. May it serve you as well as it has served me. That thing better work. If it doesn't, I doubt you'll be in any position to complain. Of course, the lava remains. Be ever vigilant of its growth. I have never seen anything like it, Blur. Welcome back. Have you made any new discoveries?